We have four blocks done. Should we try for two today? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and we have four blocks done for our Nativity Bench Pillow. So I'm thinking that we should try for two today. Don't you love that stable? Oh my gosh, the hay. I love the hay. So just a reminder to excuse my voice. I actually lost my voice for almost three full days, and I finally have it back, but now it, it if I talk too much, I get these horrible coughing fits. So, um, So bear with me. I have my water close by. So um, today let's work on block five and six. And I want to do something a little bit different <clears throat> for all my Embrilliance Essentials peeps. I know a lot of you have bought Embrilliance Essentials. So I wanted to, this, this one doesn't really need it because um, the blocks fit in 7 by 12, 8 by 12 hoops. It can fit in a 6 by 10. Like I've said before, if you take out steps 3 and 4 of the quilting design, then it will fit in a 6 by 10. So this is a smaller um, block design for, for this entire project. Um, but since so many people have purchased in Brilliance Essentials, I bet you're just itching to use it. So I'm going to show you how to do two blocks in one hooping, depending on your hoop size, of course. I'm going to use my 9 by 14 hoop, and I am going to do two in one hooping. But keep in mind that if you don't have Embrilliance Essentials or you don't want to do two-in-one hooping, that's completely okay because the process will still be photos of each block. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to merge together the quilting designs on both of them so that it'll save those steps. And then it will have two-in-one hooping so it saves on stabilizer and time. But the process, I'll work on all of block five, block five, and then all of block six um, after I do the quilting. So the, the photo part of this video will still be the same. It's not going to affect those that are not going to merge them together in one hooping. It won't be too bad. So don't worry about it. All right. So like I said, I'm going to use my nine by 14 hoop. Um, I think, let's see, it's six by, uh, the, the final designs are six and a half by eight and a half. So you could fit this in an eight by 12 hoop doing two blocks if you take out steps three and four of the quilting design on both and there would be a little bit of overlap of the fabric it wouldn't be too bad it could be done I definitely would feel more comfortable in my 9 by 14 hoop so that's what I'm going to do so let's go ahead and go over what we need for today for each of the blocks and like I said don't worry if you're not merging them together the process will be pretty close to the exact same um, the only part that will be different is the quilting but I'm still going to run you through all of one of the quilting and then you'll know how to do the other. Don't worry, photos will, will do it all. All right, so let's talk about block five. Block five is on page 17 of our booklet, of our um, PDF. It's not really a booklet, it's a PDF um, that's on the CD. And this is actually a really easy one, and that's why I was thinking we could get two in one hooping. Plus, I feel a little bit behind because I had to take a few days off when I literally couldn't speak. I had absolutely no, no words. It was... <laughs> It was funny. I actually had to call to get a prescription refilled and I'm like pushing out the words as hard as I could. And the, the guy on the phone was so um, very, very understanding and I, I couldn't get any voice out. So I'm so thankful that I have a voice again, um, but the coughing fits aren't so fun. So I will be um, enjoying the process after the video, after the filming part. So um, the main background, so just like the others that we've done, it is this bright blue uh, main fabric. And this one, we are going to start with that eight and a half by ten and a half. Make sure that you are backing your main fabric with fusible stabilizer to ward off puckers. All right. Eight and a half by ten and a half for our main fabric. All right. <clears throat> and then we have our um, our fabric for the wise men. So, and that's our only, well, we also have the star, but really easy block. This one's going to be a very simple block. So, um, this one is going to be, it's the cream, the wise, um, the Holy family was the white and the wise men is the cream fabric. So the wise men, we want this to be five and a half by four and a half. And like I mentioned before, I would recommend, even though this is an applique piece, which I do back my applique pieces with fusible stabilizer, but 
some of them you don't have to I, I prefer to but some prefer not to and but on this I really would recommend it because like I said before it's going to be on this blue fabric and you don't want your Weissman to be blue you don't want that blue coming through so that fusible stabilizer on the back will help block that main fabric from coming through my my dogs are are kissing this, isn't she so cute? Can you see that? That's Lily loving on Archer. She is always loving on him. She is just the cutest little thing ever. She is such a snuggle bug. I woke up to her about 2 o'clock this morning. No, I went to bed at 2 o'clock. I woke up at 5 um, to her snuggling up against me. She is just such a cutie. Sorry. So the Wise Men fabric, cream, silky solid, no design to it, five and a half by four and a half. And like I said, back it with fusible stabilizer. All right. And then we have our gold mylar. And I, like I said, from the beginning, I haven't been cutting mine. I'm just using it and then, um, putting it in my packet for the next day's packet. So this one, it looks like we're going to have two stars today. So that means you want two pieces that are one and a half by one and a half. If you're cutting them, if not, just lay the whole thing down, use what you need. So two pieces at one and a half by one and a half. And don't forget that I said in the beginning that it is in the directions to put um, wash away topping on top of your mylar. I haven't done it a single time during this project. I haven't found it necessary, but um, it must be needed by some machine, some needle, something. I'm not sure. I haven't needed it, but um, it is recommended. So wash away topping. Let's see. The same thing you want two pieces that are one and a half by one and a half for your wash away topping on top of the mylar um, if if you feel that's necessary all right and then for our batting today we want one piece of batting that is seven by nine this is for block five um, so batting seven by nine and then we are going to quilt this one. What is it? Um, stars four. Stars four. That's the design that doesn't go into the seams. It's the one that's all in, in the hoop, within the hoop. It's called a blue design. The orange designs are the ones that go into the seams. So anyway, um, stars four in a six by eight quilting design. Six, six by eight in four, in, in stars four. All right. And there are special cut instructions, but again, we have not needed to worry about that at all uh, because we do our quilting. And when we do our quilting in the hoop, then I, I like to do it from the back where the block is right side down and you can very easily see that quarter inch seam allowance all the way around to make your cut. All right, so our final cut size is gonna be six and a half by eight and a half. We'll just use our medium pop ruler for that. Those are so easy with that and we get, <coughs> Excuse me, we get to stitch the first the first part of that joy to the world. So it's joy to the over the wise men. And I'm gonna probably use my gold metallic for that, but I'm not I'm not absolutely sure. I might just keep the gold metallic to the stars and use the sand thread for the wording. I haven't decided yet. I might do that. I think I'm leaning toward that actually now. But anyway, um, I will show you when I get there. So that is for block five. I'll talk about block six in just a moment. Hey everyone, so I'm at my computer now. And for those that are going to merge the two designs in one hooping, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to do that. It's very simple actually using Embrilliance Essentials. <clears throat> so Embrilliance Essentials is the software that I use. It's super user friendly. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Um, and if you do decide to purchase it, please use my affiliate link. It helps our channel. So I will add a link right up here. If you click on that link, it will take you to Embrilliance and just click on the Essentials product. That's the one that I teach, Embrilliance Essentials. All right. <clears throat> so um, let's see, it opens up to the last hoop that you use. So I have, you can see down here at the bottom, it says I was on my six by 10 hoop. I need bigger today. So I'm going to go up to this preferences folder and I'm going to choose my nine by 14 hoop and say, okay. And then I'm going to click on this compass up here and click on H for hoop. So it zooms into the hoop. <clears throat> okay. So the first thing I'm going to go to this merge stitch file button right up here. And I'm going to pull up the first quilting design that we need. <clears throat> so the one for the wise men, we're using that stars for design. So it's just asking, where's this design that you want me to open? And I've got mine on my desktop in a nativity bench pillow folder, stars four. 
embroidery files block by block is the technique we're using and I'm going to look for the six by eight quilting design right there. So six by eight stars four. double click on that it goes to the center and then I'm going to click on the design and I'm going to rotate it so that I can fit two in one hooping. So I'm going to click on this blue arrow right here that says rotate 90 degrees <clears throat> and you keep, if you want to move it, so I'm going to move it up to the top of my hoop, but to do that, you would either need to use your mouse or your the arrow keys on your keyboard. But once you rotate a design, you can't um, click your arrow key for some reason. So if you click outside of the design in the workspace anywhere, anywhere in the workspace, and then click back on the design, then you're able to use the arrow keys. And the the, I sometimes I use the mouse, sometimes I use the arrow keys. It doesn't matter, but if you use arrow keys, it will keep it in the center. Um, whereas the mouse, you'll have to move it to the center. So that works fine. All right, so now actually I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the, the colors right now because you can see that we have this default one blue twice and we have the default two orange twice. And if you do that, then those when we do a color sort later, it will join those together and it will take away the purpose of having the um, placement and tack down of the, the batting and placement and tack down of the main fabric. It would join those all together. So we want to make sure to keep those separate, but we, when we do the second design, we want it to join together. So I'll show you how we're going to do that super, super easily. All right, so I'm going to click on this one, one, this first design, and then click down here in this properties window. I'm going to click on the color, and I'm going to choose the first color that comes up for me. I have in my preferences, I've got it set to Filtec Glide, so the first color that comes up for me is Dark Aqua. It could be different on your end, and you can change how all of a, a lot of things, like, like the thread color, um, or the thread brand, I should say, in this Preferences tab, <clears throat> or you can change it here as well. All right, so I'm going to click on Dark Aqua, and I'm going to say OK. All right, and then 1, 2, so you can see the numbers right here, 1, 2, click on the color, and the first color that comes up for me is blaze. I'm going to click on that and see, okay, it doesn't matter what color you choose. It's just faster, easier if you use the first one that comes up. So that's what I'm doing. All right, then one, three, and then click on the color. Now we already used our aqua. We can see it right here in this objects window. So we already used our aqua. So I'm going to use the second color down, which for me is marine, and say, okay. And then one, four, click on the color. We already used blaze, so I'm going to use oriole and say, okay. And then one five, this is the quilting design. So if you were going to have your thread colors be different on the two blocks in your hoop, then you would want these to be um, different. You want to, would want to make sure that you choose a different thread color. I want them the same. So I don't even really need to change it, but since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I'm on one five. I'm going to click on the color. The first color that comes up for me is sprout and say, okay. All right, so that one's done. I'm going to click outside of the workspace or in the workspace outside of the design. And I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File, and I'm going to bring in the second embroidery design, or actually not embroidery, the quilting design. So I'm going to close up Stars 4, I'm going to open up Stars 5, Embroidery Files, Pez, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm going to look for the 6x8 design. Right there, 6x8, Stars 5, double click on that, it again goes to the center. I'm going to click on the design and click that rotate button again and then click outside of the design, click back on the design and I'm going to just use my arrow keys to bring it down. Now when you bring it down or up, wherever you're bringing it, just make sure you're not going over the hoop. This yellow, the yellow is the hoop, it's the represented hoop. So you just don't want to have your design going over that at all. <clears throat> all right. So um, the, that one, the first one is done. The second one, don't forget, we want to change these colors and we want them to match up with these so that they will join together. All right, so I'm going to click on 2, 1, click on the color, and we use dark aqua. You can see the colors right here. And then 2, 2, click on the color. I want blaze. 2, 3, click on the color, and we want marine or whatever you use for your second color. And then 2, 4, click on the color. I want oriole. And then two, five, last one, click on the color and I want sprout. All right, so those two are done. Um, and both of the quiltings are done. So now we just need to bring in that embroidery design. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to click on this merge stitch file. <clears throat> and I'm gonna close up the quilting designs. 
And I'm going to open up the embroidery files Pez. The 6x10 single hoops are the ones I'm using. And I want block 5. <clears throat> right there, the one with the wise men. <coughs> Double click on that. It goes to the center. Now I'm going to click on this. I'm going to show you a different way of doing this. I wonder if you can do it when it's rotated. I didn't think about that. I haven't tried that. Hmm. We might have to do a workaround, but let's see. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this design. I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to move it up. Now, let's just see. My guess is it probably lines up with this and then the center mark, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to, I'm going to try something here. I haven't done this before. I'm going to do it kind of haphazardly. I think I'll just bring it over here where it's way off. All right. And I'm going to close up this design. Oh, so you know, one thing I forgot is we need to join those. Excuse me. We need to join those quilting designs in a color sort, but um, hold on a second with me here. So I'm going to see about um, doing a color sort. So I think, let me see, I'm going to click on one and two. Hold on, I'm going to say file new page. Sorry, I'm thinking as I'm going here. All right, I'm going to... I did file new page and it opened up a new tab. I'm going to go back to that other tab and I'm going to click on the first two designs. So you can um, click and drag over or just um, use the control button. So if I was on four and I hit control and then hit five, that would um, get both of them. So I want just the quilting designs. I'm going to say control C to copy. I'm going to go to that new tab that I just created and I'm going to say control V so that I've got a backup. Excuse me. All right, so then I have my those two quilting designs. I'm going to go back to that first tab, and now I have the um, the wise men. So I'm going to try this. Let's see here. If I click on design one and then hit the control button and click on design three, I am going to. Sorry, my throat. Um, so I'm going to try doing an align and distribute on this. So I'm going to go to utility, align and distribute. And it should just do those, the first design and the third design, that first quilting design and the first embroidery design. And I'm going to say, let's see, let's try center, center and say apply. And that worked. It did bring the design down. So we'll have to move it back, but it did make it so that those two are aligned within each other. So it's got... It's got the quilting design and the, the wise men design together. And then I'm just going to, while they're both selected, I'm going to move that back up to the top here so that I have room for my extra fabric there. <clears throat> I want to make sure that you can see that last bit of line so that you know it's not over the hoop. All right, so that worked really well. All right, so now I'm going to bring in the next one. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file. I'm not going to go through. Let me show you real quick here. So there's a bunch of defaults in here as well, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to have the quilting designs together in a color sort, which we'll do in a minute. All right, so I've got that the first three. Now I'm going to bring in um, the, I'm going to go to merge stitch file, go back to that six by 10, and I'm going to look for um, block six now. That camel, there it is. Double click on that, goes to the center. I'm going to click on the design and rotate it. All right, and then I'm going to click outside I'm actually going to leave it there. I'm going to show you how well this align and distribute works. I'm going to close up that window or that folder and I'm going to click on um, the second quilting design right there. Hit the control button on my keyboard and hold it down while I click on the fourth design which is that camel. All right and I'm going to go to that utility align and distribute and I'm going to say center center apply. All right, so see how it, how it did that? So it moved the design up to the center where that camel was. That's why it's moving it. It doesn't matter, but um, that's why it's doing it. All right, so those are centered. So the quilting design and the embroidery design are centered. So I'm going to say close. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to bring both of these designs down. Let's see. Yep, down with my arrow keys. Where is it? Is it in there? Yep. All right. So 
So those are all great, but remember, we didn't do that align and distribute. So I'm going to go to that other tab, this um, next tab that we just created, and I'm going to do a color sort because the, this is the one. It's, we've already done the change of the colors. Remember all these colors that we changed? I'm going to go to utility, um, let's color sort, utility color sort. And you can see it says it's reduced the design by five changes, all right? I forgot to mention that it had 10, design, 10 steps originally, now it's got five. Now notice that I don't have any of these boxes selected and I have the tolerance at zero. You need to have the same settings that I have to be able to get the same results that I'm having. All right, then I click new view. Always click new view because it gives you a chance to check and see what it did. So new view opens another tab. <coughs> Excuse me. And then um, I'm just going to look at these real quick. So you can see it makes it all into one design. And that's why you need to do that um, before you do that, um, the align and distribute. You have to do your color sort before because once it's, you can't do the color sort after. Otherwise, it's all one design and you won't be able to have it centered with one design and two design. All right. I hope that makes sense. All right. So I'm just going to click real quick and make sure it did what I wanted it to do. There's the placement of our batting, tack down of batting, placement of main fabric, tack down of main fabric, and our quilting designs. Perfect, all right? But gee, where's our embroidery designs? Don't worry. So remember, we already did that um, align the distribute. So if I click on that first tab, I already have the embroidery designs centered, right? So I can just click on just those. So Again, you can click one design and click control to click the second design, or you can click from the right side over and get drag it over and get both of those designs. All right, so once you have just the embroidery design, so the camel and the wise men, hit control C to copy that and bring it to the new tab, that one that has the quilting designs together in one, um, one design, <clears throat> and say control V. All right, and then it brings those designs on top of the, the first design, which is the quilting designs. Look at that. Yay, perfect, perfect. How fun is that? I'm just going to look at it, make sure we got it right. <clears throat> yep, good, good, good. I'm going to click outside so I can see it better. All right, so see how they look the same? So there's that one that they're all separated, and here's the one that they're all together, and everything's lined up just right. So that's great. Perfect. Awesome. So again, if you're not using embroidery software, this is a good visual, but you can do this on your machine without doing the color sort. It, it will, I don't, you probably can do that part on your machine too, maybe, but I like to see it on a big screen on my monitor. <clears throat> okay, so then the last thing that I'm going to do is I am going to send it to my machine. If you don't have that uh, machine that does that, <clears throat> you would just uh, transfer it to a USB stick. All right, so I'm going to go to Utility, uh, send to Solaris XP1, say OK, and File Send to Machine. Again, you could just put in your USB stick and save it to your USB stick. And, and you can absolutely do these blocks separately, but here's how to do them together if you choose. If you've invested in Brilliance Essentials, here's your um, way of doing that super easily. All right, so here's the first block we'll work on. This is block five. Here's the second block we'll work on. This is the camel block. All right, so let's go ahead and get started stitching.
All right, so like I said, I'm leaning toward doing two blocks today. If you can't fit them in one day, take another day. It's not a problem at all. Your project, your way, and what works for your schedule. I know a lot of people are starting to get busy with Thanksgiving coming up, so don't stress over it. We have plenty of time before Christmas. All right, so block six is on page 19 of our PDF. Block six, page 19. All right, and that means we get to do the camel. That will be fun. So for this one, I do have a change, um, but I'll tell you about that in just a moment. So we're going to start with our main fabric. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. I got a little fuzzies on there. Let's just take that. Off. All right. So our main fabric is that same blue that we've used all along this whole project. Um, and we're going to start with this at eight and a half by ten and a half. So this is a bigger one. I didn't realize that. Haha, <laughs> psych. I was thinking that this one is bigger than the ones that we've been doing and that would not make it fit in the hoop to do two and one hooping. But I was wrong. All of ours have been eight and a half by ten and a half. So my brain's not fully functioning when I'm ill. So give me a little grace there. All right. So our main fabric, this is that blue silky solid and eight and a half by 10 and a half, just like our others have been, except for that very first one. That one was smaller. So eight and a half by 10 and a half for our main fabric. Make sure to back it with fusible stabilizer. Like I've been saying all along, you want to ward off puckering. All right. So eight and a half by 10 and a half for your main fabric. And I just noticed that I've got a string inside of mine, but it doesn't seem to be a bright blue one. It doesn't stand out, so it's not a problem. Anyway, eight and a half by ten and a half for our main fabric. This is for block six for the camel. All right, and then for our camel fabric, in the fabric um, kit is this camel. Let's see this way, probably. Um, five and a half by three. So you want your camel fabric. It is a tan silky solid and we want it to be five and a half by three. I did back mine with feasible stabilizer. That's optional up to you, of course. Um, five and a half by three, but I'm not going to use this. So I've been changing up my animals on each of them doing a minky or a, a something a little bit fun. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have this minky in a very camelish color. How fun is that? I, it looks a little bit lighter on the camera, but it's not. It it's really a really good camel color. I think this will be really fun, and it of course is very close to the tan fabric for the camel. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this soft minky for my camel. And like I said before, if you're changing up your animal fabric to do something that is a minky, something soft, <clears throat> I need water. Sorry, hold on. Sorry about, sorry about that. If you're using a minky fabric, make sure that you're putting the wash away topping on that. Like I said, if you're putting it on the stars, like it says in the directions, that's pretty optional because I haven't noticed that I need it. But you do want it on minky for sure so that it isn't um, catching your needle on your um, fabric or sit the stitches sinking down. You definitely want wash away topping when you're using a minky fabric. So I'm going to use this. If you're changing out your fabric, same size, you still want it to be five and a half by three all right regular fabric that's in the fabric kit or a minky or a felt or whatever works for you something fun if you choose all right so five and a half by three for the camel all right and then we have our flexifoam so that we have a puffy camel so this we are going to have i think the same let's see flexifoam five and a half by three five and a half by three for the flexifoam okay and that will be our base layer. So we'll do that before we do our fabric. All right. And then we have, um, don't forget, um, let's see, this gold mylar. So mine's still in block five. Sorry about that. Since we're doing two of our blocks, I forgot to move it over. So the gold mylar for our stars. So on this one, it looks like we have two stars again today. So if you're cutting your mylar, you want two pieces that are one and a half by one and a half. And like I said, in the directions, it says to also have uh, wash away topping at one and a half by one and a half. All right. So um, mylar one and a half by one and a half, one and a half for the gold stars. There's two of them on this one. All right. And then we have our, <clears throat> our um, batting. So our batting is going to be seven by nine, seven by nine for our batting today. And we are going to quilt this one with 
uh, the stars five stars five in a six by eight that's the orange design <clears throat> sorry six by eight <clears throat> and it goes into the seams so that's the one I've been telling you that when you see when you sew the seams when you sew the blocks all together you want to make sure that that seam is inside <clears throat> you don't want the side of the quilting showing you want it in the seam allowance all right so i mentioned that in the other videos when we or the other tutorials of this project when we're using that stars five because there's a placement stitch all the way around and you just don't want to see that you want it in your seam allowance so make sure you're doing a full quarter inch seam allowance when you sew these blocks together all right <clears throat> that's it so that is block six like I mentioned I'm going to put five and six together in one hooping totally optional and you don't need to worry about it you'll still see all the process in photos all right let's get started
on my shirt today. This is one that I made. It says, yes, I'm cold. And then over on the side, it says me 24 <laughs> seven. How fun is that? I saw this um, as something that that was being sold in stores. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can so easily make that with Embrilliance Essentials. So I just took a couple of the fonts that I have in my Embrilliance Essentials and made it myself. And I, I love this one. I think it's so fun. The sweater is so vibrant. I love this color and it comes in a lot of colors. So actually I will add a link here of where you can get this sweater. It is a really nice sweater. It was really easy to embroider on and, and I like the fit on it and I loved all the different colors. I actually am thinking about buying another one so anyway information um at that link you can purchase that the the sweater and i will add information underneath this video about the sweater and the design like i said i just made it in a brilliance essentials it was really easy to do and how are you doing with your goal so my goal is to get out to just get out and do stuff and and be a functioning member of society, right? Instead of isolating and, and staying inside. It's actually raining really hard today. So, but I am going to go see some friends and see, and go see football. Um, but, uh, so the other day I did two things. I, I was like, Oh my gosh, I, I need to do my goal. I need to get out and do something. And I've had this gift card for Hobby Lobby for like four years. So I went, I took myself to Hobby Lobby and I'm not going to show you everything I got because there's something that I'm going to talk about later, but, um, I got this. So I have this Scottish Highland cattle obsession. I love them. They're so pretty, especially now that I live in Idaho and I can go on bike rides and actually go see them and pet them. And so I, I love them. I'm super obsessed with them. So I found this really cute, um, wall hanging of a Scottish Highland cattle. And so it's now it's on my stairs. It's so cute. I will share a photo of that at least, but there's something else that I got that it, that is actually the reason I went and I found an alternate of it, not the exact thing that I wanted, but it's something that'll work great. So I was very excited and very thankful to find that. And I got a couple of uh, gifts for the grandkids for Christmas. Every single thing I bought was 50% off. That was pretty exciting. <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so it's funny. I get up to the register and I assume, you know, I'm going to need my credit card in addition to this gift card. So I pull out both my gift card and my, my credit card and my gift card was for $50. And like I said, I've had it for at least four years and, um, my total was $49 and 74 cents, something like that. So I had like 26 cents left over. I gave the gift card to the gal in line behind me so that she could use the whole, like what, 26 cents, um, off for her next purchase. But how cool was that? What a nice gift. I, I received that from my mother-in-law several years ago. So I finally got made use of it. And I got one of the things, <coughs> one of the things that I really wanted. So that was really exciting. And, and that, that Highland cattle, I totally didn't expect to get that. And I got a cross wall hanging. I got some fun things. So it was a fun trip and it was like last minute. Oh my gosh, I still have to do my goal. And so I went like right before they closed and, and got out. Right. And that, that's my goal. That's just to get out and do things, be, get outside and maybe do something a little bit different. So what, sorry. So what are you doing on your goal? Tell me how you're doing.